Well, hello everyone and welcome to episode 573, recorded on the 1st of March 2018. Yes, summer is officially over and the cooler weather begins, but you wouldn't think so. It's uh, stinking hot here still on the Gold Coast. Nice and still, nice and humid and that's what we love about Australia, isn't it? Nice, humid, hot weather. All the way till, I don't know, all the way till maybe about mid-April, end of April, something like that. All right, so we've got a big show for you this week. Thank you for listening. Thanks for downloading. You might get us on the iTunes or on the uh, whatever other podcatcher you have. You should jump on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads and let us know what, what podcatcher you use, what's your favorite thing. Let us know whatever's on your mind and um, yeah, and also the rest of the Aussie Tech Heads community and we can all... I don't know, chat to you. If you're, if you're lonely, we can all chat to you, write a post. Uh, what else can I tell you about what's happening? You can go to our website, which is at aussietechheads.com.au forward slash podcast. We've got a YouTube channel as well, where you can watch, if you're listening to this, you can actually watch a video as well. How excitement. It's at uh, youtube.com forward slash aussietechheads. And uh, on the Twitter, you can get me at Glenn Goodman at aussietechheads with a hashtag of aussietechheads. How's that for social uh, integration you can also listen to other great podcasts like the aussie max zone if you're into the apples and you're a little could be a little apple fanboy uh, michael and and garth and and zane they go through the apple news of the week and also the aussie tech no not the aussie tech security the aussie tech crypto uh still pumping out episodes each week bring you up to date with all the crypto technology and buzzwords and jargon and all that sort of stuff so those guys just break it down with a bit of fun along the way so it's all good to to see what they're doing i know talking to jace he comes across a, a, a something to talk about like he might you know, uh, there might be some new site to go to or some program to start mining or whatever. Uh, he, he'll try a lot of it before he uh, jumps on the on the uh, Aussie Tech crypto to tell you about it. So he's, he's first-hand experience in most of the stuff. So, uh, but speaking of Jace, he's not with us this week, although he might be able to join us through the episode. Busy, busy night for him tonight, but uh, for today. But let's uh, see who we have got here. We've only, it's pretty, pretty lonely in here tonight. It's just me and Jordan. How you going, Jordan? I'm good, mate. Just That's you and good. Me. That's it. Just chilling, chilling. Like I'm here, you by yourself. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I don't think I've ever. I think I might have done one or one or two shows by myself. They didn't last very long. Only about twenty minutes because I had no one to talk to. <laughs> Pretty. Well, you know, yeah. things go slow. <laughs> well, if you'd answered yourself back a couple of times, you might have got a few more minutes out of it. Well, that's true. Yeah, that's true. They say you're allowed to talk to yourself. You're just not allowed to answer yourself back. That's right. They learn you insane. Apparently, yeah. so uh, yeah, I won't do that. Uh, look, we've got a couple of emails this week, but the one that we'll uh, put on the show this week is from Justin. He goes, "Hi guys, in the last couple of weeks, we've noticed a lot of Windows 10 users are finding that their mouse and keyboard have stopped working. Other USB devices may also have stopped functioning." Oh my goodness me! Uh, now, so thanks, Justin, for sending this in because sometimes you come across these little faults, and geez, you can pull your hair out to the point where you just go. Stuff it. I'm just going to reformat. And then, well, you know, that's a big job. Yeah, he's done that a few times. Yeah, that's right. Now, uh, yeah, so he goes on and says, the fault can be a bit of a challenge to fix. However, the actual issue has been found to be caused by a faulty Windows update. And Microsoft support article details the resolution for the problem. And he has provided a link to the article, which I will put in the show notes. Uh, there are two methods shown. One for when the mouse and keyboard are still working and one for when the mouse and keyboard aren't working. Uh, I hope this information helps, is helpful and saves you time throughout the day. Well, Justin, it, uh, I haven't come across that one yet, but I think hopefully, yes, hopefully someone out there, they might have had this problem right now, and that will definitely save them time and, and money. So thank you for sending that in. And any, if anyone else has got any tips like that, yeah, send them in. We'll push them up. Uh, but yeah, Windows 10 updates or Windows updates as a general, that's sometimes a place to start when you're trying to troubleshoot an issue that has just begun. Uh, you can just roll them back and see if the issue is fixed. But, uh, do you ever have any issues with uh, USB or, or funny issues like that, Jordan? I, you know, you get a few issues here and there. I often find that you've got to keep updating. Usually when there's a problem, Microsoft are pretty quick to, hmm. to jump on it and release a fix for it anyway. So if you just keep updating... Yeah, you know? well, that's right. Yeah, unless it's you know, unless unless it's something they haven't found. Obviously, they can take their time, but mm. Mm. but I've had a couple of issues. Like, uh, uh, well, actually, I had a laptop just the other week, uh, last or two weeks ago. 
Uh, that wasn't all. Yeah, there was a USB port that would take the printer, but it wouldn't take anything else. Really weird. The external hard drive didn't work in it. The mouse didn't work in it. So maybe. That's a bit strange. Yeah, I know. I just put it down to a busted port. So or, was it an old computer or a new newish one? Yeah, look, it was it was fairly old. I think it was even Windows Seven actually. So this might not have been the the correct fix for that one. But you know, mm. the printer was working out of it, and nothing else was, which made it really strange. So anyway, um, time was up. Had to go. So I said, don't use the <laughs> don't use the port. And <laughs> use another one. Pretty much. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Go buy a fifteen dollar. I generally hub. don't have too many problems with the USB ports on mine, but mine's fairly new. I only bought mine probably twelve months ago. So mm. now, um, I. Don't know about you, Jordan, but we can just get a little bit of a crackle through your mic when you speak. I don't oh, really? Know. Yeah, I don't know. Turn it down. Maybe is that is that speak again? When you turn it down, I don't know why that crackle was coming through. I don't want to turn it down too far. Is it any good now? No, it's still is it working now. It's still crackling. Yeah, yeah, that's a funny, mm. funny one. Um, I don't know what that would be. I don't know if it's. I don't think it's my end. But, uh, I'm not touching it at all, and it doesn't look like it's clipping or anything. Hmm. But what we might, oh, well. yeah, we might have to pause, and we'll figure this out, and then we'll come back. So hold your horses. All right, good stuff. Sorry about that. That was quick, wasn't it? We're back. So um, the magic of podcasting. We were about only ten minutes, but to you guys, that was just a. Click of the finger, nice little buffer music in there. All right, now... I how much editing you've got to do later. Oh, no, that's not too bad. I've got the clapper and I've, I know how to push it all together. Not too bad, not too bad. It's the when... Hi, Eric, but when Eric swears, <laughs> that's when I've got to go and cut it out and that takes the time. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got to write the time code down and got to go through it and yeah, blah, blah. So, because we don't do swear it on this podcast, it's child friendly, kid friendly. So it's, uh, that's what we're all about. That's right. Uh, now let's get into some stuff. Oh, I'll just before we do go on, I have got a good podcast recommendation for you at the end of the show. So uh, stay tuned for that one. Uh, Vodafone and Nokia are building a mobile network on the moon. Can you believe it? The moon will get its... Why, why you ask? Yes, I, I did the same thing. The moon will get its first mobile phone network next year, enabling high-definition streaming back to Earth, part of a project to back the first privately funded moon mission. Now, Vodafone Germany network equipment maker Nokia and car maker Audi said on Tuesday they were working together to support the mission 50 years after the NASA astronauts first walked on the moon. So it seems pretty amazing, doesn't it, that it has, it's been, well, I don't think we've been back to the moon, have we, since, the, since those guys went there in 69? I'm not a big moon buff, but I don't think we have. No, don't know. I don't think so. You're not a moon buff either. Yeah, probably, they have probably, probably a few, few we don't know about. about. Could be, a couple of Ruskies, something like that. <laughs> Vodafone said it appointed Nokia as its technology partner to develop a space-grade network that would be a small piece of hardware weighing less than a bag of sugar. So uh, one executive involved said the decision to build a 4G network rather than a 5G network, because 5G is all the, all the buzz these days, was taken because the next generation networks remain in the testing and trial stage. Well, that's all right. Moon's not too far away. I'm not sure how long it takes to get to the moon, uh, but it's not probably too long. Let me Google that. I'm going to Google that, find out how long to get to the moon. It's probably, what, a week? I don't know. Oh, is it the fat? How long does it take to get to the moon? Apollo missions took about three days to reach the moon. But the quickest trip to the moon was New Horizons probe, which zipped past the moon in just eight hours, eight hours, 35 minutes. Wacky do. Speed demon. And how far is the moon? Here we go. I can, this will be Aussie space cast. Earth's moon is the brightest object, blah, 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 blah. blah. It's closest approach to the moon comes as close as 225,000 miles or 363,000 kilometres. Yeah, that's wow. uh, yeah, that's a fair uh, fair distance though, isn't it? 363,000 kilometres. That's a few trips up and from the Goldie to Melbourne. Uh, that'd be yeah, I reckon probably 150,000. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't think I'll ever be doing that. But uh, oh, speaking of the moon, it's a big, nice, big moon out there tonight. Actually, when while we're recording. It was a nice big one. I can see it from the window here. Yeah. So we're... Um, in your basement. 
That's right. <laughs> yes. Uh, so any any comments on moons, J- Jordan? Anything? No, Jordan? only that I saw that article and I was thinking that was that was pretty cool. Yeah. And then I was reading something. I don't know. There's some stories about um, Elon Musk in the, in the news lately too. I've noticed. So Musk. Yeah. Did you say Husk? Husk, Musk. Yes. Sorry, did I say Same Husk? Thing. I did say Husk. I think so. Oh, it's all right. My apologies. I do know who Elon Musk is. He's, I'm a big fan. I think I'd get his name right. He's probably but, a bit, um, bit Husky. He's, leaving, he's putting Tesla aside for a while, apparently. So. Oh, what's he doing? Um, Space oh, race. Venture, oh, I can't remember. He was venturing into something, something with Bitcoin or something. I can't oh, remember. Oh, dear. Yeah, right. I think it was something, like, I think it was something with Bitcoin. Yeah, okay. I don't know. You know, I, I leave the cryptocurrency to Jason Will, but um, I, I know I bought some... Uh, look, I'm going to check me ripples. I bought some ripples. You want to be like a Bitcoin trader or something. Yeah, right. Yeah. I don't, I look, big, I don't know. It's just, you know, it can be here one second, gone the next. So easy to steal, all this sort of stuff, you know. Easy to be hacked, I, don't know, I reckon, anyway. But, um, let, yeah. me, let me tell you how much my ripple's worth. I've, I've bought it at a few amounts. Uh, I think the... The highest I bought paid was about uh, oh geez three dollars, I think it was three dollars. But now it's down to a dollar eighty five. That's that's up a bit. It's been down to seventy cents. So I bought a few little few little uh, coins along the way as it decreased down to about a dollar twenty five. I think I bought some at. So I'm happy that it's going up. That's good. A dollar eighty five. So you bought them for three dollars, you said, and then they've gone down to a dollar eighty five. Oh, hang on, that's not ripples. I don't know. This app doesn't work. It's not working at the minute. That's a bit cray cray. Now that, what the? Hell? Must be running off my computer. <laughs> oh no! It's oh, the, my the computer's not working properly today either. I turned the Wi-Fi off uh, in the house because when we do the podcast, if I turn the Wi-Fi off, the kids and the wife can't access the internet and slow us down. So I turned the Wi-Fi off, and my phone has picked up the Chromecast in the lounge room. And wants to try and connect <laughs> to that. So let's uh, get rid of that. Let me just turn the Wi-Fi just off. And let's see if I can refresh me, me crypto coins, and see what see what it's doing. I, I thought a dollar eighty five was a bit much. Yeah, oh, it's a dollar sixteen. So um, yeah, I was happy there for a second. Now I'm back to sad. Uh, Bitcoin thirteen thousand seven hundred seventy eight dollars. So that's still up there. Bit of yep. a bit of a uh, change from twenty five thousand though. Yeah, I reckon it has come down a bit, hasn't it? Yeah. But yeah, look, I, I don't know. I'm surprised when people say they're going into Bitcoin trading. They obviously know something I don't know. So good luck to them. I'll probably be a billionaire. I'm still sitting on ripples. <laughs> uh, look, another good idea that's coming out is, uh, well, it was already out in the US and stuff, but Amazon brings third-party delivery and fulfillment to Australia. Now, I don't know if you heard of this, but uh, so what's happening is if you are a seller and you know you sell through amazon then you're able to send them all your stock or you know a portion of your stock and they'll store it for you in their warehouse and when someone orders it off the website they will post it for you pack it up and post it out to the customer how good's that uh sellers yeah, pretty good yeah i reckon it's awesome uh so obviously there's a few fees involved but sellers that sign up to fulfillment can send their products to the melbourne fulfillment center for packing and shipping uh, they, Amazon will also handle returns and customer service. I wonder how much all that costs. Uh, sellers are charged for storage space used, and each order Amazon fulfills uh, with the cost of shipping included in the fees. There's no minimum number of units that need to be sent to be to sign up to the FBA, which is the fulfillment by Amazon. Mm-hmm. Amazon is running a promotion that will give sellers access to free storage if they sign up before August 31st. So it's probably something to think about. Um, and so, like, I, I did look at the website, but I couldn't get into it because obviously I wasn't going to sign up to it because I've got nothing to sell, uh, like no physical items. But I'm just wondering if it w- if you could also like send a, I don't know, say you'd sell to the US, you could probably send a crate, you know, over to the Amazon over there in the US to be, you know, dispatched locally from there maybe. That might be a yeah, way of doing it. Yeah, that could be a good, good way of getting your product over there for a, a lesser cartage cost anyway. But yeah, so that, I saw that. I thought, oh, what a good idea. And so I'm not sure how Amazon does ship it. They must, I know they obviously pack it in their own boxes, but they must rely on Australia Post or another courier service. Surely they wouldn't have their own, they wouldn't have their own uh, courier service, would they? 
you wouldn't no. you wouldn't think so but yeah so if you're interested in that uh just uh go just google up the fulfillment by amazon and uh sign up before august 31st if you can be good great have you used amazon yet jordan no i haven't i'm still a I'm still buying off eBay. I don't know what it is. I don't know whether... I don't know. I buy anywhere and everywhere. I've used a few places, but I haven't tried Amazon. No, I... I did try them, I must admit, many years ago when they were in the US and I was able to get something sent to right. Australia. Oh, years yeah. ago. But it was, there wasn't a very, very... Like a very large variety of things you could get sent here. Yes. But um, try it. Mm. It was a long wait for whatever it was. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just, then. I'm just mainly eBay. If I have to buy something, I think. Um, I know there's what the it's other one. Easy, that, isn't it? Yeah, pretty easy. And like now, PayPal. Oh, and good news with PayPal. I got an email through the week uh, that they're lowering their fees, their merchant fees. I think they were about two point six percent. And and so they should. Yes, so they should. Well, they had. Well, pro- they really have to because they've got their competition. I wish, I, I wish eBay had lowered their fees. They're selling fees. Oh, are they pretty high, are they? Yeah. Yeah, okay. They charge, they, they charge you. They charge an arm and leg to sell stuff too. Yeah, right. Well, Gumtree seems to be the cheapest place to put things these days. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how... It doesn't cost you anything, and it's funnily, it's still owned by eBay, isn't it, Gumtree? Yes, yeah. So I guess eBay must just be, uh, you know, I think you pay to be, you know, put up the top and you renew your listings and all this sort of stuff. But yeah, eBay's become... Like it started off more of a an auction type of a, a second hand market, didn't it? Where you know you could get some good bargains, but now mm. it's it's pretty much all buy it now. Yeah, it's just a lot of buy nows. Mm. Yeah, and I think maybe but you know I just had I just had someone telling me that the the target out in um, I think somewhere out in in Gippsland, which is down in Victoria, um, was closing down. Target. Yeah. yeah, right. You know, I'm just thinking, you know, I've heard, I've heard of my stores and all sorts of big, big retailers like that closing down. Well, I guess. Well, I, I read a story and because of online. It's like eBay and all these things. It's just so much cheaper and easier to get things, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's right. I read a story today. I wasn't going to uh, bring it up because I, it was one of those uh, do I really care stories. But uh, but now that you've brought that up, uh, let me have a look and yeah. see if I can find. Pay more attention now. I've been trying to read the. Read the articles for the last ten minutes of the episode, <laughs> trying so, to find something to read myself. Uh, yeah, yeah. So what I was going to bring up, I found it here. Yeah. So you're talking about yeah, the the stores closing down. Well, Harvey Norman's holding share prices tanked uh, this week. So the Harvey Norman yeah. holding share price fell thirteen uh, percent following the publication of its half year results uh, through the week. Uh, company store. Yeah. Yeah, so store revenues grew five percent. Net profit after tax fell nineteen percent. Yeah, blah blah blah. You can read it. You know, you can read it all on there if you want. But uh, surprisingly enough, I bought something from Harvey Norman on the weekend. And uh, what's oh, really? it? Yeah, and what's even more surprising was that it was the best deal I could find. So really, yes, that is surprising. I know. I, I nearly fell over, and lucky, and I could have fell over because I bought a bed, so I would have had somewhere to to fall over on but <laughs> i bought a, a single bed uh, for one of the kids well, you can't buy you know you can't buy a bed from jb hi-fi can you so i suppose you've got to get it go to harvey norman yep so i went to went to harvey went to like a uh i know just another local bed shop went to 40 winks uh but harvey norman come out trumps so yeah well, there you go it was good so i've got to Comfy. go well we haven't got it yet uh we've got, i've got to go and pick it up so uh, that's, that's yeah. the only thing. It wasn't. I was. I'm too stingy to pay eighty bucks to get it delivered. So I thought, well, why pay eighty bucks when You've I can been working out a lot lately, haven't you? So you got the energy to go and get the trailer and. Well, that's right. That's right. Just going to hook hook the trailer up, go up, stick it in, and bring it home. So that'll be good. That's uh, it. Yeah. So, uh, but that's interesting, isn't the problem it? Problem is with these new beds, they're so much heavier than the old ones. Yeah. I bought one kind of twelve months ago, and. I reckon it's the heaviest bed I've ever carried in my life. <laughs> well, I think, yeah, we could, could. we bought one a couple of years ago. And, yeah, oh, it's heavy. It's a lot thicker, too, this, these ones that we bought. And uh, I think yeah. that's probably the majority of them. Lot, lot, they've got that nice little cloud cushion or something on the top of it, you know, and all this sort of posh stuff. Uh, like, really comfortable. Like, comfortable as. And, uh, yeah, but gee, they are, you're right, they are heavy. <laughs> really heavy. Uh, Apple admits using Google for iCloud. Oh my God! Play the bum bum bum. 
Apple has disclosed for, disclosed for the first time that it uses the Google Cloud platform as part of the infrastructure for iCloud. Who would have thought Steve Jobs is just is on rotisserie in that grave of his? Because uh, I think you can remember back when he was alive and when Apple and Google first had a bit of a stoush, he said something like, ne- never again will I will allow anything Google onto my phones or whatever. He just hated them. He just did want nothing to do with them, nothing. And, and now, yeah, part of the iCloud is on the Google Cloud. The iCloud services provide backup uh, to data on devices, including iPhones, iPads, and Macs. So that's what happens when you uh, get into the iCloud. You're actually in the Google Cloud. Now, the online document, the Apple's iOS security guide, discloses the that Apple uses both Google Cloud Platform and AWS for iCloud. Does that come as a surprise to you? Oh, hey? No, we've lost you. No audio. Can't hear, can't hear him. He's gone. Gone. So, um, well, it must have surprised him. He's speechless. Absolutely speechless. But, yeah, look, it, I guess it just surprises me. Um, I'll let you know. <laughs> well, you, you keep fumbling around. I'll let you know when you come back on there, Jordan. I'll, 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 I'll give you the thumbs up. Uh, yeah, probably... Does it surprise me? Yes, a little bit, I, I guess. Um, because you think, oh, well, I suppose you think, yeah, iCloud, you know, you're, you're pretty similar to AWS and Google Cloud, isn't it? So you think, oh, Apple must have a stack of servers somewhere. You don't really think about these things. Uh, but I guess they don't. They've, they probably have a little, a small stack, but they've got to have, uh, yeah, overflow into the Google, Google Cloud and all that sort of stuff. All right, let's just check back in here with... Jordan? No? No, he's gone. He's gone. He's he's gonna have to restart his software again. Well, what? No, he no no no. Can't hear him. No. No 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 no. Ah, I better keep me on so he can see. Uh, so what we might do is let's take another break. Uh, we should have commercials. Who wants to advertise with us? We can, See, we can do breaks. We're able to do it. So let's have a break, and we'll uh, get back to you soon. All right? Rightio. Welcome back. Yes, we are back. We've got Jordan on the webcam. Something's gone wrong with the microphone, sound card, or whatever. Maybe it was a Windows update. What do you What do you think, Justin? Windows update? Could be. That's what, that's what we're thinking, isn't it, Jordan, at this could, stage? Could be, it could be anything. It could be anything. We've restarted. We've done... Done the lot. Done the lot. Oh, I'm thinking maybe it's maybe it's a driver or something for Windows 10. It's a pretty old uh, external sound card that I'm using. So mm. maybe the driver just maybe an update or it could, it could, look, I'm just guessing. Yeah, it's something like that. But anyway, we can have some time to play with it. Hopefully, this will do for now. It will. It will. Now, look, the driver is not the only thing you'll be throwing out this week. Did you know that Australians waste about eight billion dollars of food every year? And that amounts to about the average household throws out over a thousand dollars in uneaten groceries each year. It's terrible, isn't it? I know uh, I've got a bit of a bugbear at this place, you know, at our house about stuff getting thrown out. You go to the fridge, you pick up a tomato and it's rotten or whatever, and stuff's been stuffed up the back of the fridge. You don't even know it's there half the time. You go, mm-hmm. but anyway, enough of that. The most popular app in the field to help you combat this scourge on society is an app called Yumly or Big and Big Oven. Now, these are nice little apps. Uh, what these apps do is you can create shopping lists based on reps, recipes you've saved. Now, this app called Yumly wins by collating the ingredients across all of your recipes. Rep- <laughs> I'll, I'll say that one again. Uh, all of your recipes and by producing a much cleaner look. Now, uh, another great feature of the app is the ability to use your leftovers. Yumly, again, has an advantage allowing you to pick up as many ingredients you want that you can find in your fridge or pantry and matching them to recipes. So how good's that? So if you, you know, you go through your fridge, you go, what am I going to have for tea tonight? You go, uh, well, I've got, I've got a bit of pork, I've got a bit of apple, and I've got a t- tomato. And it'll search through its database of recipes and bring you back a recipe that you could possibly make uh, with those three key ingredients. Uh, now, Look, they, they, I think they might be free, those apps, but th- this particular reviewer, I think, came from the Brisbane Times. Now, this particular reviewer liked the sound of a app called 
prep pepper cords, oh, true paprika, uh, which costs seven dollars ninety nine. Probably worth it though. It's uh, you can import recipes from just about any website or blog. Uh, the app will also then import the ingredients and cooking instructions and catalog it for you. Now this paprika can even automatically convert the recipe to metric or scale it up or down depending on the size of your family. So that's that's pretty good. That's a pretty good little app. I'm thinking I'm pretty much about buying that one. I think that's great. From there, you can create a weekly meal plan to view and share in the app or export to the calendar app of your choice. Yeah, that's good. Once you have, uh, you, yeah, you play blah, blah, blah. Now, Paprika allows you to catalog the items in your fridge and pantry. Probably takes a little while, though. It's worth doing, though. Uh, you list two, Say you list two kilograms of rice in your pantry, and if you add a recipe that calls for rice, Paprika is smart enough not to add that to your shopping list. Instead, it'll remove it from the amount in your pantry. So that's bloody good, isn't it? It's like a little mm. inventory uh, thing. So that's pretty good. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, have you ever used anything like that? Anything? No, I haven't. Like any? No, I haven't. Yeah. So, um, do you, do you guys do you think you guys throw out food like a wasted food? We have a lot of leftovers. We generally eat them, but you know, we give it a few days and then throw it. But yeah, most of the time, I don't know. Yeah, well, we don't probably have an issue with leftovers as much. Like leftovers is probably a different story, but, but just things like. Yeah, as this as this article went through, like say you know, um, or rice, uh, you know, sometimes you know you, you open the fridge and you look in there and there's you know there's just old stuff in there or cans in the pantry or stuff that you know you, you, sometimes you go through to have a pantry clean out, you throw on cans out that expired three years ago, and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, in the old days, I never had expiry dates. In the old days, yourself. Well, you know, this is right, but you know, the expiry date doesn't mean that it's going to go off on that day. It, uh, it's well, an especially ind- canned food. I mean, canned food probably lasts a, a lot longer than even the expiry date. I think. I think it would. I think canned food is a long time. A long time. Mm. Uh, yeah, but I know that we we chuck out a lot of stuff, and uh, well, I shouldn't say it like that. It, it's, uh, we chuck out probably our fair share of that thousand dollars, you know, every year. Yeah, probably. You know, well, so we chuck out stuff as well here, but generally it's the leftovers more than you know everything gets eaten. Mm. Yeah, well, that's good. Uh, the appetites. Yes, yes, I know what they're like. Yeah, so that's good. So yeah, Paprika Recipe Manager. Yeah, I'm going to try that. So let's report back how, when I, after I buy it, and uh, I'll see if it works. I'm not going to be the user. I'll, I'll give it to Kim to <laughs> to use. She can <laughs> she can catalogue the the fridge and the pantry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wonder though. It's probably look. It's, uh, I wonder if it has got like a barcode scanner. So instead of like typing stuff in, you can just scan the barcode. That'd be a lot easier. It must have. It must have. Surely. There must be something like that. But anyway, that's that well, one. If you live in New Zealand, you could just have a shop and Charlie do it for you, couldn't you? Yeah, yes. Well, that's right. Uh, yes, I saw those. Decide, yes. It saw, doesn't it decide on its own it's art, with its artificial intelligence and tells you what's in your basket and what's not? Yes, and there, there was another uh, that I saw on a YouTube video. I'm not sure where I saw it. I don't, th- I don't think you showed it to me. I'm not sure where I saw it. But there's another other technology around. Uh, they set up a demo shop, and they got cameras like on the walls and on the roof and everything. And I don't know how you must be logged in to your account or something when you walk through the door. But you take something off the shelf, it gets added to your cart. You know, like it, it adds up, starts to add up as soon as you take yeah, it off. I was reading that on the show a couple of weeks ago. Oh. In New Zealand, that was the shopping basket. And you put your things in the basket and it automatically knows what you've got. And then, But I thought this one was you – it, it did it as you took it off the shelf, not as you – Yeah. Oh, I don't know whether it was in the basket or taking it off the shelf. I don't know. But it was, oh, right. You knew, you knew what you yeah. had. I thought it was the, tro- the actual trolley itself had like a, a, an artificial intelligence Like a big – yeah, like an NFC or something. Yeah, they could decide what you had. <laughs> yeah, right. Ask and mark it off. Yeah, yeah, but it's all getting uh, really tricky, isn't it? That's right. I remember because we were it's talking about the, the the death of the checkout chicks, possibly. Yeah, that's right. So, we were. We were talking about that. Yeah, yeah. And now we're getting now we're getting Wi Fi on the moon. I know. Three G on the moon. You said, didn't you? Well, four, no? Yeah, four G. Yeah, and I don't know 4G. what oh, technology is going. Everywhere, isn't it? I don't know what it's supposed yeah. to do. Was it just going to send us a picture of the Earth back? Is that what it's, that what it's going to do? Like, we'll be doing. I have no idea. Yeah, like, I don't Maybe think... Maybe he's going to go and live there. Yeah. 4G. Well, he need 4G when he lands that car of his. Yeah. It's, you know, it's going to land there one of these days, isn't it? Or did it shoot off yeah. past Mars? It's just gone. I think it's gone. Oh, it's, did it? I think so. 
I think it didn't. Yeah, I think it overshot, and it's just yeah, it probably did. just out there. Uh, it. Yes. <laughs> now, look at moving on to another one. The ACT government is still running unsupported operating systems. Well, does that really come as any surprise? I, I guess it's it sh- <laughs> probably still running XP. Oh, goodness me. Uh, Auditor General Maxine Cooper this week revealed 10 remaining instances of systems that use servers with unsupporting operating systems in the 2016-17 audit. And look in the show notes, there's a PDF of that exact audit. You should have a look at one of these things. They're just like 60-odd pages of... Like, who sits down and writes these things? Like, No wonder there's, there's a lot of money spent on this sort of stuff, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, like just, pay, just audits and reports and... like. Like, fair dinkum. Who's going to read that in 10 years? Nobody. Systems that remain on unsupported servers include the Land Titles Business System, Endos- Endoscopy Reporting System, Medical Transcription System, and E-Development Business System. It, is also, it also said it has implemented an ICT security-approved vulnerability mitigation solution for systems on unsupported servers. Well, good. I don't think it looks anything like this for those on video, but... Yeah, they could do. <laughs> now, shared services, blah, blah, you blah. Never <laughs> you never know. That looks like it's on the moon, that thing. Uh, the Now, shared services undertook a program to deploy Trend Deep Security Agent to all servers with unsupported operating systems in mid-2016 to protect the servers against any threats. Now, this software places a virtual bubble around a vulnerable system, protecting it from attack until such time as the server can be decommissioned. Now, this apparently has been going on for a while. Uh, The audit office has been warning the government of the need to upgrade all this end-of-life server stuff since 2011-2012. The audit is is an improvement, though, on 2015-16 when 34 instances of unsupported server operating operating systems were uncovered. So what have we got this year? We got 17, uh, 7 or something. I think 7, down from 34. So, you know, we're doing all right. But, yeah, it's all right. It's still seven. Yeah, look, I, I know these things take a lot of money to replace, and you know they're probably just trying to save the taxpayer, me and you, some money. But uh, yeah, I don't know. They they still got to get with the times. Uh, they do, but you know it's it depends on the information they're keeping on those things. You know. Yes. So I don't know, like uh, like ta- was it lands titles? Well, that's pretty important lands stuff. Titles, that's, that's pretty important. Yeah, what else? They e development, whatever that is, um, a medical transcription system, whatever that is. So yeah, I don't know. They should, uh, yeah, just update. You know, having too much important stuff on there on old servers that can be, mm. you know, gotten about or crashed or hacked or. Go and put a couple of two more two hour parking spaces in the town. You know, raise some money, <laughs> raise some money. Come on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just find us a bit, a bit more for speeding. Now talking about getting scammed. Uh, Australians are reported to have lost $1.3 million uh, from Bitcoin and Ethereum-related scams. Now, they weren't sort of scams too much about, you know, buying through unscrupulous uh, exchanges or anything like that, but more of through ransomware and malware scams. So, yeah, yeah so $1.3 million, that was just what was reported. Like, like, funnily enough, I was speaking to someone today or yesterday, it might have been, and um, Oh, I think it might have been two people this week have told me that like they've had the uh, crypto locker virus uh, in the past and they've actually paid uh, to to get the key. And I thought, wow, I, I wouldn't pay. But then again, if they've got no backups, then you you probably would pay if you really needed it. I think they said they they got them down from about I think seven thousand to about two thousand. I think I think at the end they just said you either take two thousand or you can get stuffed, and uh, they the scammer yeah. said yeah we'll take two grand thanks put it in and they sent the key so lucky them. Yeah, uh, well, it pays to have a backup, doesn't it? Yeah, well that's right. So have you ever seen any of those little scams? You have to deal with any of those? I've never dealt with any, no, but I have heard it quite a lot. Very mm. common. Yeah, like there was a, a bloke that I used to look after, and he someone yeah opened up the crypto locker virus, and it just went through his computer. It said, "Oh, there's another computer on the network." Went through that. Said, "Oh, there's another oh. five computers on the network." So they went through all of those and just encrypted everything. Uh, but luckily, luckily, I had set him up with some cloud backup. And uh, he that's was, exactly uh, what I'm saying. Mm. You can't go wrong, and there's so many people out there that ignore it. 
Yeah, that's it's right. Vulnerable, but it can happen to the best of us. Yeah, because they. Because you can back up. Is back up. <laughs> yes, because you can back up locally. But if you get a, like one of these encryption viruses, uh, then your your local backup is destroyed as well because it gets encrypted as well. So that's why. Well, look, the local backups get done too. But even so, backup, even if it's locally, you know, you just might chance the fact that your local backup didn't get yeah. caught up in, in the bundle, or you might have had your USB drive turned off at the time when it was <laughs> when it was all going down. Yeah, you might just be lucky. Always or, back up. or you might have did a Windows update which rendered the USB port useless just at the time that the crypto just viruses. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, thank it you, Microsoft. Hurt, it can't hurt to have a backup. No, yeah. thank you, Microsoft. You have any form. Yeah. Any form. <laughs> That's right. I think I've got I've got the data on a computer. I then I, I'll back it up locally, and then I've also got it going up to the cloud. So well, um, yeah, For, rule of thumb is three backups, isn't it? It's, it's, yeah. It's, 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 Plus a local backup, plus a remote backup. And even with photos, uh, I also push them up to the free Google Photos for unlimited. Oh, yeah. You know, like, yeah, well, I've so got, got my phone automatically doing that. Yeah. Take yeah. So I noticed that they, because I was running with that Google Photos, I was running uh, an older version of the backup software, like, you know, that, yeah. that looked synced your, your, your folder to up to the cloud. And look, I don't know if it worked properly because I, I went, I was just fumbling around and I went to the Google photo page and download our new software, and which is, I think it's been out for a little while. So I downloaded the new software. It looked a bit different, uh, rejigged everything, and it, it yeah. hasn't stopped uploading since I did it. So I, the other one must have been broken. So if you're using the Google photo upload, our syncy thing, uh, probably go and check you've got the latest version and, and yeah, sync well, that's again. What I was saying to you earlier before the show started, even though we have backups, a lot of people set and forget their backups. Yes. And you do need to just pop your head in once in a while and have a look and make sure it's actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. Yeah. Because otherwise you can, you know, you think you're backed up and a year later something happens, you're like, oh, it stopped backing up six months ago and I didn't realise there was a problem. Yeah. You know? So how, how, would you, uh, how would you pop your head in to check? What would you do? What was your checking oh, just process? Want, just check your software. Just check whatever it is that's doing the automated backups. Get in there and have a look once in a while. Yeah. Don't I, just be blind to it and think it's done and it's, it's, it's all automated and it's safe and that's it. Mm. Always just pop, pop your head in and have a look. You know, even if it's once every month. Just yeah. Pop your head in there. Yeah. Well, uh, I think you're probably also should also uh, take it a step further and maybe just create a text file. You know, just hello, and save it in one of the backup directories and wait till your backup. See if, it, see if it's going. Yeah. yeah. Just make That's wait. What I mean. Yeah. Yeah. You got to make That's sure. What I mean by checking, just make sure it's actually functioning. Yeah, that's right. Because a lot of systems, I don't know, because you use that du duplicate. Uh, does it? Will I'll it, use that. Yeah. Does it? Will it send you an email or, or something after each backup? Yeah, does you can. You can set up notifications for it. Yeah. Yeah. And if it if it stops or starts or, mm, or that's whatever. good. You know, I've used some really top notch backup stuff over the years, and I've I've still always checked it. Like I yeah, had oh, yeah. crash plan well for years, and I'd always get in and check that. You got to. Just never know, you know. You know, right. You're sharing space with a friend, and your friend turns off the computer, and they don't tell you, and then you don't realise that it hasn't been backing up because they haven't got the, the USB drive turned off. There's always mm. just something you never know. Yeah, yeah. No, you got to back up. There's, uh, you know, yeah, that you, you might, if you're not checking your backups, you might as well not be backing up. Uh, and, and it's like if you, if like some people go to the probably to the r real extreme, and you know, say they've uh, backed up their system. So they'll get another computer, restore it to make sure that the backup works, and then put the backup yeah. on the shelf, you know? So yeah, they'll, um, they'll back up the whole thing and run the image on and make mm. sure it works and then put it on a drive, another another hard drive on the shelf. Now, there's, yeah. some, there's some really good software around, uh, and it's low cost, and there's a couple of things that are free. Uh, now, let me get this, because this is... I've, I've been using this stuff for a little while, and, geez... Their free stuff is just as good as anything, I reckon. Uh, you might disagree, but I'll I'll bring it up. It's called uh, from a place called Ease US. I'll get you a. I don't know if you've ever heard of them, but uh, look, they got like they got data recovery. You know, data recovery free, data recovery pro. Uh, you know, you can do the comparison to see what you get. Uh, you know, between the two, uh, you've got Petition Manager. You know, free uh, or pro. 
you know, it's just so, so, so good. Uh, backup, backup and restore free or home workstation server, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I used the free version just the other day. I, I had bought the package like a little while ago, uh, but, uh, but I thought, oh, instead of just using what I had, it's a bit old now. So I just downloaded the free version. <laughs> it was good enough what I had to do. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. beautiful. Uh, data transfer, iPhone data transfer free. There you go. To do PCT trans photo you can uh, back up you can copy your system and restore it to another system that hasn't got the same hardware in it and stuff like that it's it's look go and have a look at it it's uh e easeus.com e-a-s-e as in ease e-a-s-e ease us.com e-a-s-e us.com that did sound like an ad then didn't it <laughs> that's the same as and, and i swear by the petition software i use quite regularly from them there's a pro version and a free version. I just use the free version. Mm. Um, Ezeus or whatever it is, Ez Ezeus or Ezeus, like yeah. you said, petition manager. Yeah, they well, make a, a great petition master. I think it's called. Yeah. Yes, I think so. And look, the stuff. And it's great, and it's free. Great for if you want to petition up your drives. Yeah. yeah and it, you look at the, you know, what you get between the free and the pro. And, you know, you work out what you need. But, like, they'll offer you some deals. You know, you go to the cart, you fill your cart up, then you, you know, you back out of it and, you know, you get the pop-up. Ooh, before you go, do you want to do it for this amount? And uh, and like, I think the petition manager and maybe something else, like, you get, like, lifetime upgrades as well. Yeah. So, and, and even with it, yeah, that's enough plugging them. Jeez, you think I owned it. But, yeah, but <laughs> they're pretty good. They're pretty good. No, I wish. Well, they're saying they got over twenty million users, so I don't know. Good, good portion of them have to be paying for it, mustn't they? So that'd be good. Uh, now, here, here's a story here from uh, another Canberra story. Malcolm Turnbull has signed up to the MBN at his home, and he's signed up oh. to yeah, he signed up to the hundred megabit speed tier, so a hundred down, forty up, uh, which and oh, I, I yeah, well, I guess right. The reason why this article was probably written more than anything it was not just curious that he's got it connected but i think the article was written more so because remember a few years ago when he was the communications opposition uh member or whatever he, he, he was well known for saying nobody needs yeah nobody needs more than 12 megabits down nobody what can you what do you want 12, more than 12 for so yeah so it's just uh ironic that he signed up for the 100 down 40 up I think that's why that story was written. Cost him I'm a surprised he's got time to sit at home and use that speed. Well, that's right. Well, I think he's. I think he's home at Kirribilli. He's the busiest man. He'd be the busiest man in Australia, wouldn't he? Has, has he got time to sit on his internet and actually watch Netflix? Oh, he's too busy leaking. You know, sort of doing whatever he does. But he's. Yeah. Uh, so what else he's done? Plus, he's got a whole family of kids there. That they've got. You know, they're too busy watching Netflix. I don't know. Yeah. So he's got uh, the he's got uh, he connected the MBN via the HFC on December eight. He escaped the six to nine month delay that hit the HFC network, as we've discussed before. And because it says here that he that the some assistant secret some PM and C what's that the Prime Minister and Cabinet first assistant secretary Paula Ganley told estimates the department had negotiated with MBN Co to make sure the connection proceeded quickly. It's good to have pull in it. Oh, yeah. Do hey? you know who I am? <laughs> yeah. Don't you know who I am? <laughs> Bring up Tulsa should say, don't you know who I am? <laughs> who was famous? Oh, I, can, oh, I can skip the delay period. Yeah, that's right. I'm Malcolm Turnbull. Don't you know? Uh, don't now, you know who I am? <laughs> now, um, yeah, so just more on that HFC stuff. The NBN has delivered a planned update because I'm waiting for the HFC, right? I had a couple of guys in the street last week. Don't know what they were doing. They were, you know, pulling cables and all this sort of stuff. And uh, so it looks like that maybe it's coming, but it looks like they've just, they've pushed it back again. So on the on the website, it said, you know, check back in February. So I checked back today and it just said, oh, no, you still got to wait. Uh, so it's been the H, so MBN Co has delayed a planned Somebody update. Somebody doesn't like the Aussie Tech Techhead podcast that gets done from that street, so they're just holding up the internet for you. Probably, I oh, know. Like, they, well, they should be pushing it in because you know we could Facebook live stream if we got faster ups. So you know they they should be rushing out to put it in. So uh, the HFC network by a few more weeks. Yeah, so seven hundred thousand users whose connections were pulled back for redemption 
from remediation last year. Network upgrades to improve your customer experience will add an average of six to nine months to the HFC connection. It said in a new message on its maps, we are currently finalising our new rollout schedule. New information will be available over the coming weeks. So, can't wait. Can't wait. Waited this long. Can't wait any longer. Been this long. I've done a few shows with you guys since then. Oh, and yeah, I know. Yeah. I've been on every show, so it's been a while. Yeah, like I just need, well, lately now that I've, I've got off the uh, the Telstra Beasts internet, uh, well, 4G internet plans. Um, now I went with the Audi, and now for oh, like half the price of the Telstra plan, I'm getting oh, about three times the amount of gig per month for the phone. And so at the end of each episode that we record, uh, I'm just uploading just off the 4G. It just goes, it saves me an hour. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah and then... Just on the 4G. That's right. That's why I can't understand all the trouble with the, you know, NBN. It's just, it's just, you know, everyone's talking about 5G. I've been saying it for ages. They're talking about 5G coming out, and everyone's complaining that the NBN's slow. Mm. But most of these 4Gs and 5Gs are going to be faster than the standard NBN that we get today. Yeah, well, that's right. But I guess, like, you know, you're getting pretty fast into the house, and you're probably going to get a bigger bandwidth bucket to play with. Uh, the 5G might, you know, probably be restricted. You might get a few gig here and there off your telco but um yeah i don't oh, know look, yeah you don't get much data do you hopefully no. they'll uh, improve the mbn as as they improve every internet connection over time well i think it's got to be fiber to the home that's going to be the best thing they got to do but like i remember when all this was you know getting thrown around that that fiber like they some of the stats that i can remember was you know that the, the amount of data that they can send down one of those fiber fiber cables is like immense and then once they sort of run out of bandwidth of sending that data down they change the color so they can send another color of information running like like concurrently or something down the same pipe and it's got another whatever the same amount so it doubles just because of a different color if you know what i mean mm, yeah. Uh, yeah yeah so, so it never ends no, well, that's right. There's a few colours around, so you can... It's a never-ending amount of data that they can send. So I don't know what yeah. happened to that ID. Maybe that was all, you know, furfies. I don't know. Never heard of that. That one again. Uh, now, look, I was going to uh, tell you about this podcast that was sent to me from one of our listeners, uh, Chris, in Canberra. So how's he going with all those old computers in the government? Uh, Silk Road. Now, there's a podcast called Case. I'd get the podcast till next week. If they're using all those old servers over there, it might, might be a bit of a delay. No, no, I know on good authority that he's got a. I think he's got a bonded ADSL connection. If it's not bonded, it's, it's two connections. I'm pretty sure he bonded them. So, but anyway, he sent me an email. He'll get, he'll get a quick smart link. Yeah, he, he'll get it probably in two days, not four days. Yeah. <laughs> So he sent me a, a podcast called Case File, and uh, the latest episodes, there's three parts to it, are uh, talking about Silk Road. Now, if, for those of you who don't know what Silk Road is, it's the place on the dark web where drugs and guns and pretty much whatever else <laughs> nasty that you could think of was sold and was delivered straight to your door, payment via Bitcoin. And so I think uh, from memory, Silk Road might have recently just been disbanded or, you know, the government shut it down. I I don't know. I'm listening to the tapes, uh, so we'll find out. But just as a quick, uh, say, sort of background, uh, they start off with, uh, I'll read this to you, their little, say, prologue. The Silk Road was an ancient network of trade routes that started in China in the second century BC via a combination of roads and sea routes. uh, Goods like silk, paper and spices were transported for the producers in Asia to markets in Europe. Eventually, it wasn't just the goods that were traded. There were also ideas, customs, religions and even diseases, which I think, uh, as as this podcast pointed out, they reckon that's how the bubonic plague might have spread because it uh, infected a few fleas and the fleas jumped on some of these, you know, I don't know, the silk scarves you know all this sort of stuff mm-hmm. uh and got so the silk road expanded throughout different countries and civilizations for several centuries it connected asia europe africa and the middle east a marketplace across the world now that's not a good intro mm. that's uh you know you won't find a better one than that so yeah look that that so far has been a very good and interesting podcast it's sort of going through the history of the current silk road 
um, yeah. yeah, and how it was sort of formed and, and yeah, what happened. So it's really good. So look that up on iTunes or your pod catch a case file, it's called, the podcast. Yeah, I've heard of the dark web, but I've never heard of Silk Road. So there you go. Yeah, so it's, it's amazing how, like, you, you, you can access the dark web through the Tor web browser and then it's just yeah. a whole different world, you know, like. I've heard of that too. I've never really tried to have a go, but. No, I've never really bothered either. But, um, but yeah, apparently, you know, the web addresses aren't normal web addresses. I think there's some random numbers and letters uh, oh, really? that make up the web address and you've got to know probably where you're going. I don't think I there's... I thought you had to use a VPN with it as well. Well, I think that's probably just so you don't... People don't know that it's you jumping into it. Oh, okay. like, that might be what that one's for. A bit of having a bit of both worlds, not just the Twitter mm. browser, but... The... VPN too. Mm. Um, yes, all right. So yeah, have a listen to that. Now, look, that's probably everything I've got this week. Did did I know you've had a few crashes there, Jordan? So did you save any? Yeah, I did have a few crashes and lost a few of my articles because <laughs> I didn't save them. I had them saved. Well, just kind of pasted in a text document. But there was there was one I sort of brought up, probably a headline. Um, children are finding it harder to hold pencils because of technology. Oh. Pediatricians. Warned. Doctors have warned that children may not be starting school with the ability to grip a pencil properly. They say it could be the cause of increased use of technology like iPads. Using tablets and computers could stop finger muscles developing in the right way so they can easily learn to use pencils and pens. However, this, this might not be correct. Um, sorry, however, there may not be a correct way of holding a pencil anyway. So that was ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is a correct you way. You can see where it's going. If we're, if we're not picking on the kids for being on them too much, we're mm. going to pick on them for not being able to write properly because they've never used a pen before. Well, I think they that... don't get encouraged to draw as children, rather than they just get encouraged to play with their iPads. Well, I think there is merit in that because I know, like, it's a good theory. Hmm. Yeah, well, you know, like you know, when I write now, like, yeah, a bit messy and. You know, it, it's sort of rushed and it's messy and it's unformed. And you think, mm. yeah, geez, like, when do you write these days? You don't write. like. No, well, I always pick up pick up the keyboard. And if, if I need to write something a bit too long, I'll print mm. it myself. Yeah. I'm, I'm bad. Mm. Well, that's, that's another thing. Even, like, you don't sit down and, like, even running write. I wouldn't. I, I don't think I running write. If I had to write something down, it's, it's, it's probably italicised a bit, but it's not proper running writing. And, uh, right. yeah, and, uh, yeah, computers are, are sort of, we're losing the art of that, aren't we? But, but you know. Yeah, th- I think we are, yeah. And, look, you know, even reading. Yeah. Reading other people writing can be difficult because you're not used to the. Well, know, I've got. Whatever. Yeah, well, I've got some. Right here, actually. I've got come across some uh, some old postcards, you know, from, like, the 70s. Yeah, great. Yeah, and, like, there they are. There's one there, right? But then, yeah. like, you turn them over and look at the right. I can't read them. And how small is that writing? You know? Jeez. Yeah. It's crazy. But still, that's not flow, uh, courtesy of writing, you know, running writing. That's not all joined together. In, no, that was, a, that was more of a print. Yeah. But yeah, most of that. Oh, that's, that one there's a little bit runny. But yeah, you'd have trouble. You'd have trouble reading it too, wouldn't you? Because it's, you're just not used to it. Well, that's right, and it's small as well. So yeah, oh, so okay. the art of reading it and the art of writing it, I think, is definitely it does hold merit. Because I can't read. I had a lovely Christmas at one of the something who lives at Costa. One of the I can't even read it. Yeah, so there you go. There you go. Anyway, I'll put those back. Are they saying that, you know, the kids need to pick up their pencils more? Mm. My yes. Kids do. They, my kids love love writing. Yeah. Reading. Oh, yeah, my kids like reading. They go to bed and read a book than play with their iPads. Oh, that's good. That's that's but, real you know, good. It is good, you know. Um, and, but, but we don't let them have their, their, and I call them iPads even though they're not their Samsung tablets. Everything's called an iPad these days. If it, just, just need to find a word and put an eye in front of it, isn't that what everyone does? That's right, yeah. Oh, my Samsung is next. Um, they, go, they go to bed and read a book, but we don't let them have their devices at all through the week. We're only allowed to have them on the weekends. Yeah, yeah, we limit through so the week. Focusing, yeah. well, I reckon they're focusing more on school because of it. If they're doing their homework and their reading and all those sorts of things. Well, I find their behaviours better when they get off them for a while as well. Yeah. My like, kid, my, one of my kids has nightmares. 
And if if he doesn't play with his iPad mm. or his hand, he doesn't have nightmares. Simple as that. Yeah, right. His brain, his brain is not that switched on and that active from playing games and doing all those things before he goes to bed. Well, I know. Because I know, I don't know if you've tried or if he still has nightmares or whatever, but my young bloke used to have nightmares as well. And what I did for him was like when he was sort of asleep when he was before he was having a nightmare uh and when i went to bed i just go in and I, you just rub his head and say like he just sort of half sort of stirs not till you wake him up but he just half and then you just sort of say to him oh you know it's it's daddy it's uh everything's okay have a happy dream think about something nice and just fill his head with nice stuff and i found that yeah. that that sort of stopped it uh and hopefully i think that's what it was so I'll take well, the credit for that. I think, but I think what definitely stopped it for mine was just the like, iPads. Yeah, you're probably right. Devices. Yeah, because I just felt like they were going to bed and they couldn't sleep. They weren't sleeping properly because their brains were just too switched on. Switched on. Yeah, that's right. Yep. So oh, right. I let them watch let them watch a Simpsons episode or something on the couch, and then and then they don't get to bed with the television or anything. They just go to bed and they if they want to read a book for. 10 minutes until they get sleepy they do otherwise they just generally go to sleep yeah yeah that's pretty good that's it that's really good we well, i so think one parent to another i'd say if you if your kids have nightmares or they're a bit they're a bit hard to get to sleep at night mm. have a think about how much they're on their devices before they go to bed on a weeknight especially yeah that's right all right, good stuff. Well, that's uh, yeah. brought us to the end of a bit of a disjointed episode, <laughs> I think, this week. Yeah. My so. apologies for that. My fault. I... No, that's no. Well, that's what happens. It's Thursday nights, you know. We always get tech issues Thursday nights. If it's ever going to happen, it's going to happen podcast time. We're all a bit tired, so these things happen. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So so sorry if it was a little bit, uh, you know, stop and start or whatever. But uh, we got through it in the end. So I hope you got some value out of it somewhere, especially that case file podcast. I've been listening. To that. That's good. So uh, thanks, Chris. All right, good stuff. Uh, thanks, Jordan. Thanks for coming in. No worries at all. Thank you. No worries. Uh, fix up that sound card or whatever it is, and uh, good luck with that. Might have to go back to the old analog solution. Oh, it all comes back around to analog, doesn't it? It always does. All right, good stuff. All right, thanks, everyone. And, uh, yeah, stay uh, stay cool. <laughs> we might see you next week. Oh, I'm thinking of putting starting up a footy comp. I know I probably should have mentioned at the start of the show, but if, if you're still listening, just send a message on Facebook if you think it's a good idea or not. I'll probably just do it anyway, see what response I get. If it's a good response, we'll keep it going. Uh, I might give a prize of something like free hosting or something for a year, something like that. We'll work something out. If you think it's good, yeah, let us know if you want if you want a, a, a tip and comp. All right, good. Okay. Sounds good. See you next week. Thanks. Bye-bye.